Thank you for joining me, fellow Guardians. This is Sam from Multiverse Mission Control, and today's quest is learning video games, teaching the rookies. You know what I miss? Those little instruction booklets that used to come with the games in the case. They would tell you what buttons did what, why that was significant, and give you a little flavor text about the world you were about to explore. I loved studying these when I first got a game, because then I could just imagine what it was I would need to do once I have got in there. I could even mime it out on the controller ahead of time. But while every good game will tell you the buttons during the intro, new players may struggle with this stream of information if they're not familiar with the controller they're using. This is one of those kind of reflexive things I've found it difficult to teach new players. It's like, ask me how to hold a controller, I'll be like, like this. Then I get asked to explain in more detail and I'm like, Okay, how did I learn this again? <laughs> to a new player, this is a new experience, an alien sensation. They have no idea if they're even doing it right. And it's difficult to interact with a game if you're struggling with the basic tool by which you do so. So I'd like to dedicate this episode on how to handle your controllers. So for a typical console controller, you hold these little legs with your pinky and your ring on the back, and the fat of your palm on the front. I like that. You don't actually hold with your thumb because you need that to push all the buttons. Okay, imagine holding a remote control. When you hold a remote, you got all your fingers on the back and you kind of squeeze it between your palm like that, right? So that your thumb can do all the button pushing. It's a lot like that. You just subtract two fingers. And then you got your other hand helping you out. And then when you finally got it down, you should be able to rest it on your legs comfortably when you're just doing stuff, la la la, or to be able to bring it up in those moments of tension. And it shouldn't be uncomfortable, it should be just like fitting the controller into your hand. PlayStation was especially good about making a controller with the human hand in mind. So with those digits engaged and making sure the controller doesn't fall down, that leaves these three digits doing all the work. You see the shoulder buttons at the top here? Your middle and your pointer fingers should be resting comfortably over top of them. Then, it should only take like a little twitch to activate them. So, now for the tricky stuff. Get your ring and your pinky, your middle and your pointer, just wrapping around, kinda. So now your thumbs, they're gonna be doing the most of the work. When you're not active, you should have your thumbs kind of on the sticks, or kind of maybe in the middle of the buttons or anywhere you feel plastic, whatever works for you. But basically, you want to keep them in a state of relaxed, but ready. It's typically the case that your left thumb controls the movement, and your right thumb controls the actions. This here is the directional pad, or D-pad. This is pretty common for controlling your character. Your thumb should be able to just kind of maneuver around there pretty effortlessly, Sometimes you may have to hold multiple buttons at once, so you just kind of distribute the fat of your thumb around. Sometimes the D-pad does weird menu stuff, so it also pays to know how to do the left stick. In that case, you just kind of lean it around to steer. And sometimes it's like you lean a bit to walk and move it to run. Jerk it around. You should be able to go back and forth pretty easily. Now the right thumb does literally everything else. The right thumb can reach all of these buttons and the right stick, but if there's one command you remember from this video, it's the start button. The reason the start button is so important is because that's how you pause your game. It's really important to know that. Because, you know, the phone may ring, you may have a quick chore that needs doing, the house may be on fire, whatever. So you want to be able to just snap it over, pause your game, and go do it. Because, you know, losing your progress because you're trying to be a responsible person, all kinds of unfair. Now, learning the buttons is going to be hard, I won't lie. Remembering them under pressure, even harder. But, in about 80 to... yeah. But in about 80% of the games you play, two buttons remain pretty consistent. X is jump, square is attack. Not always, but usually. So, bottom button jumps, left button attacks. If you can remember these two, then it'll be simple process of elimination what the other two do when you're trying to concentrate. And if the game gives you the option to change your controls, you can just keep that consistent throughout. So, 
On PlayStation, bottom button is X, left button is square. If you can keep those in mind, like your little comfort zone, then you'll be able to handle the other two eventually. Maybe not right away, but you'll get it. On Nintendo and Xbox, bottom button is A, and left button is B, and then it has Y and X. My point is, if you can focus on just two buttons at a time for the beginning, then you'll be able to find the calm in the storm. It'll make it, the whole learning process a lot easier. Other generalities include that the right stick moves the camera or that you use a pair of shoulder buttons. Shoulder buttons aren't always labeled well, and they're different for every controller, so I feel I should cover that quick. For Nintendo, it's pretty simple. You got the left one labeled L and the right one labeled R. And then you have Z on the right side, but yeah. PlayStation gets a little trickier. Because you have four buttons. L1, R1, L2, R2. You still have the L and R, but the ones and twos may be a bit confusing. Ones are closer to you. That's your pointer finger. Twos are further away. That's your middle finger. That's going to be tricky. It took me a bit, I think but it's doable. And then on Xbox, the ones are bumpers and the twos are triggers, so called because of how it feels to press them. And because of little naming generalities like this, anytime you have to push a stick in, you hear that click? That's called L3 and R3, because the shoulder buttons were there first. Yeah, I know that was a lot of information, so just try to take this video one piece at a time until you've got it down pat. For the first few times you play, your hands are going to feel really weird. Carpal tunnel is very common for beginning players. You may not be able to play for long periods of time, but that's okay. Just know your limits. Eventually, it'll be just like wearing glasses or breaking in new shoes. Whatever bothered you at first, you won't even notice. You'll be too immersed in the game and your hands will be too used to the motions. The rest is all practice, coordination, and determination. Well, I hope that was helpful. Next episode, I'm going to try to cover the keyboard and Wii controls to make sure I've got all my bases covered. So, thank you all for tuning in. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And remember, you all have the potential to get good. Peace out.